What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Knock Stiff Golf. I'm Kyle, and like I say every time, I'm just a fellow golf addict that happens to live in Anchorage, Alaska. We're going to be doing the drawing for the Bannon Dune giveaway at the end of this video, so stay tuned, see who's the lucky winner, that I'm going to be mailing the Lion Loft Bannon Dunes print, as well as the Dream Golf book signed by Mike Kaiser. So stay tuned to the end, and we'll get that winner picked today. <laughs> Today's video is going to be a what's in the bag. I recently put up a video that was kind of a club cleaning video that I did in my garage that got a lot of great reception in my opinion and I thought people saw how good the clubs look but they don't know which clubs I'm actually using besides a couple of them. I thought we could do a little refresher. I did a what's in the bag sometime last year. I feel like a couple of things have changed but at the same time I'm still sticking with the stuff that works at the moment. So without further ado let's dive into what I'll be using at the beginning of the 2020 season. So these wedges are the second edition of what I've been using now for the last three years, I believe, and they're the Callaway PM Grind. Now, right now, I'm using a gapping of 54 and 60 because the irons that I have, the pitching wedge is so strongly lofted at 43 degrees that I had to buy a 48 degree iron for that same set. So 48, and then I have the 54 sand wedge, and then a 60 degree lob wedge with these Callaway PM grinds. The thing that I love about these is the high toe and obviously the ability for me to be able to lay this thing just wide open or flat and hit flop shots or any type of Phil-esque shot that I can think of. These wedges, I've just had a ton of confidence this year with anything inside of 90 yards. It kind of started to evade me towards the end of the season, but still, these wedges are my absolute favorite clubs that I think I've ever owned. I have the Golf Pride MCC plus four grip in these ones uh, along with the KBS uh, I think it's the high rev yep high rev 2.0 uh, 115 gram shafts so these clubs are easily my favorite and this 60 degree is what I just about use for everything off the green Guys, if you're enjoying this video, please just go down below, hit the like button for me, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and hit that little bell so you can be notified every time that I release a new video. And you can come watch it, leave a comment, all that kind of stuff, and it really helps me out. Thank you. Next up, we have the irons. So the irons have not changed from last year. I'm still using the Titleist AP3 4 through pitching wedge. And like I mentioned just a moment ago, I've added the 48 degree wedge as well. Now, there's been a mishap that I had with these original set of irons is during the winter season, as some of you probably saw on social media, I broke about two of the clubs in the same exact spot. And that was right along the hosel. And it was almost identical from my four iron to my seven iron to, I believe, I believe it was uh, maybe a, another, a, it was four iron, a seven iron, and maybe something else. I can't recall. But they all broke in the same exact place and they all had the True Temper AMT black shafts in them. So I went to our club pro at my course and talked to him about it since he had ordered them for me and he sent them back. They replaced them and yet I still had more irons break. Even as recent as my Chambers Bay trip, I had a five iron snap uh, from the middle of the fairway in the exact same spot. So I wrote to Titleist myself, I said, guys, this is unacceptable in my opinion. I don't have any confidence with hitting any of these irons that they're not going to break. And essentially that's keeping me from feeling like I can play to my best ability. Because at the end of the day, if you're swinging every shot thinking this could be the shot that this club just snaps in half in my hand, it's not a very comforting feeling. They reached back out. They said, not a problem. Pick out the shafts that you'd like to be replaced with and send us back the whole set. So I shipped them back in a relatively short period of time, maybe like five days, they had the clubs almost back to me, and I replaced them with the KBS Tour C Taper 120 gram. These shafts are awesome. I've never had the KBS in my irons before, so this was a new one for me, but after some reviews and talking with some friends of mine, this came highly suggested. They are a very attractive iron shaft. They have no stepping to them at all. It's just one smooth piece of steel. They regripped them. I had all Golf Pride MCC Plus 4s on all my clubs, and they regripped them with the Golf Pride uh, Tour Velvet, which is more than good enough for me. I was really digging the MCC Plus 4 because I preferred not to have much taper to my to any of my golf clubs really these ap3s have served me well they're the 718s so they're probably going to come out with a new version of that here within the next year just don't quite have that forge feel to them so that is the one thing that i think is missing from the feel in irons 
but it's a great club, especially if somebody's not going to be playing a lot or tends to have pretty big wide margin of error in terms of their misses. This seems to be a club that is extremely forgiving and I have to say they're they're quite attractive as well. So moving on to my hybrid that I have, it is the Ping I-20 still. It's a 17 degree two iron uh, with this very attractive Mammoth Dunes head cover from Sand Valley. Uh, as most of you know from a previous couple videos I mentioned, this is where I shot my lowest score ever. So I had to buy a head cover there as a keepsake. So this two iron is a stiff shaft. It comes with the Ping TFC707H S Flex shaft, nothing custom about about this. This is just something I think I bought off a Golf Galaxy or something, some sale, and it's been okay. This is probably a club that will get replaced in the near future. Um, every once in a while, I'll absolutely smoke this club, but if my swing gets a little bit out of whack, I feel like I cannot hit this thing to save my life. What I'm really looking at adding is maybe some sort of driving iron or just a different look to a hybrid of some sort, maybe a Callaway. Not really sure. So if you have any suggestions, shoot them down below to me. Next, we can pop over to basically Old Faithful. This club I've had for probably six years or so. And I've tried to replace it just thinking I needed newer technology and it never worked out. I always ended up coming back to this club because I have so much confidence with it. And when I hit this thing right, I, I don't think there's a club that I hit better, even driver. And so this is the Callaway X2 Hot. This is a 15 degree three wood. It's got the, just a stock shaft in it, really. It's it's the Aldela ATX 60 Stiff Tour, um, again, with the Golf Pride MCC Plus 4. This club has been through a lot, and I actually need to take care of it a little bit better because I have the issue of this club has been left out in the cold and gotten hot because you can see some separation between the ferrule and the actual club head. So I think I need to heat that up and push that back down and clean this club up because this club has been quite good to me over the years and has always been kind of a steady eddy for tee shots where I'm a little maybe too nervous to hit driver and obviously going for par fives and two this has helped me out more than more than a couple of times next we can head over to probably my favorite club in my bag and it's only been this way probably within the last season and a half but it is the driver and it is the callaway rogue it comes with the project x even flow shaft it's a 65 gram stiff i have it set to neutral standard nine degrees um i'm thinking i might need to mess with that a little bit but this has been my go-to club on most tee shots uh, besides par threes, of course, but I just feel so much confidence with this. If it's a 290 yard par four, I'm still going to hit driver. Or if it's one of those where it's got a narrow fairway, I just almost feel more confident with this than I do with a four iron off the tee. So I've been hitting this quite a bit and I've gained a bit of confidence in it. And I think it's led to lower scores because I've had shorter irons into greens, usually leaves you closer to the hole with more chances for birdies. So that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. So again, that's the Callaway Rogue. Check it out. They have the Epic Flash, all these new ones, but I think I'm going to stick with this for another season and I just really enjoy it. So that brings me to the last club that I have, and that would be my putter. And again, I still have the classic Band and Dunes head cover on it, and it is the Odyssey O-Work 7S. Now, I've had this club for about a season and a half or so right now. I think I got it last winter and I got the Super Stroke Pistol GTR 1.0 grip on there where I've always had a, a much thicker grip on here. I had the Super Stroke Flat Sew on here and with the weight in the handle. And I always thought something was kind of off with my putting. So I took that off, regripped it, and I really like the feel of no weight in the, the grip. It allowed me to feel the club head a bit more when I was putting, and I seem to just feel like I putted much better after that. Now, the one thing that I'm not a big fan of that I think I need to fix this coming winter is this is a slightly toe-weighted putter. So the toe, as you can see, hangs down just slightly when I'm balancing it versus a face weighted putter or or a severely toe weighted putter. Now I've always considered myself to have a very straight back straight through putting stroke where that would be a benefit to have a face weighted putter that doesn't open or close very much during the stroke. So I may be looking at fixing that and getting a different putter because I feel like I've putted with a few more of the face weighted putters and I used to have a two ball putter that I loved and I feel like I need to go back to that and kind of check to see if that's going to add a little bit more confidence to my game. So again that's the 
Odyssey O-Work 7S putter that I have right now, and it is a great putter, especially that head shape is nothing but confidence when you're standing over, especially if you draw a line on your ball. It's very hard to mess up the alignment with that, so if you haven't tried one of these, you should get to a pro shop and try it ASAP. So then it comes down to what ball I'll probably be playing in early 2020, and it's a ball that I finished half the season with because I just fell in love with it again, is you saw last season that I was playing with the Vice Pro Plus ball with the Noxstiff logo ball on the side, and I still have a couple of dozen of those. You can actually see them right back there on the shelf. They're a great ball. I, I really do love them. I did notice that there was a little bit of lack of endurance on the, the skin, so a few good wedge shots or iron shots, and that ball is about done, which completely acceptable that's not uncommon for a softer ball and so you can't really play multiple rounds with the vices in my opinion even though I have but this is the ball that I kind of switched to and that's the Srixon Z Star I've really loved this ball and I only kick myself because I didn't try the Srixon XV and so that's going to be another ball that I order and kind of play around with a little bit to see if that's something I enjoy in terms of the golf bag that I'm using I still have my black ping hoofer bag it's a great bag with a lot of useful pockets in it. I love the kind of magnetic pocket that it has that I can just reach in and grab whatever. Water bottle pocket is very ergonomic to when you're walking, being able to grab your water while you're not wasting any time having to put your bag down. It's got the built-in rain cover in the, the back padding, so it adds a little extra padding when you're walking. It's just a great overall bag. The only complaint that I might have is that since I moved to a mid-size kind of thicker grip, that sometimes it's kind of a pain to get the clubs down to the bottom of the bag if they're there's all the clubs in the bag. So I'm looking at maybe changing that up. I really like a lot of the Jones bags or more of the classic layout of like a, a two divider versus having five way divider. I haven't really thought about that too much yet because it's not honestly that big of a problem, but I would just like to be able to put the club in and have it go all the way in versus hanging out because 13 other clubs in there that are blocking the way. Another upgrade that I made this year that I won't really show you guys too much is I did get a th click gear 3.5 push cart. I kind of set myself to walk more often and since I was going to be doing more course vlogs and filming out there I needed something to be able to kind of set my camera on when I'm filming etc etc. It just makes it a, a lot more easier and I know a lot of guys are kind of anti push cart and only carry when they're out playing and I get that. I respect that. I like it as well but sometimes when you're trying to vlog and carry a drone and a camera and batteries and everything else it's nice to have the push cart there to make things a bit easier so no shame in that game click gear i think really does make the best push carts out there and i love mine well guys i think that about wraps up the video if you would please give this video a like if you enjoyed it go down leave a comment about what clubs you're using what clubs i should try and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already it really means a lot to me when i see that number growing because it lets me know that i'm doing the right thing and if you would go hit that bell for notifications so that you'll know every time that i release a new video I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in this month as I've put out a video each and every day. Go back and watch the ones if you haven't seen them all yet. And guys, as always, I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, guys, here it is. Uh, Tuesday morning, it's 5.45 in the morning. I woke up, gave everybody a chance to get entered that wanted to get in before I did this. So on this left-hand side, you'll see the list of names. Honestly, we didn't have that many people get entered properly, so there's 18 total people. So I'm actually just going to refresh this page. I haven't even haven't done anything on it yet, but just wanted to show you that uh, to keep it fair. So over in this right-hand corner over here, we're going to do max of 18 people. And now we're going to click to see who wins. So let's click generate number five. It's going to be Sarah Stewart is going to be the winner of the contest. So I'm going to be reaching out to her on YouTube and I'm going to be sending her the Lion Loft print and the Dream Golf copy. So sorry guys if you didn't end up winning this time. I have to do a few more of these and give you some more opportunities.